Hi right, YouTube, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Apple Weekly number 14. Yes, I know I'm a wee bit late. Apologies for that. That is because this bad boy here arrived on Friday and I was busy setting it up. But I've got it all set up and I thought, okay, I'd uh, have some time to do this week's stories. And I've got a few of them, uh, good ones. Uh, so the podcast for this Apple Weekly will be up by tonight. So if you want to watch it on the way to work or whatever your journey is and have it on your iPad, your iPod Touch, your iPhone, the link is in the description. But not wasting any more time, the first story is in relation to the MacBook Air itself. Consumer Reports, uh, who by the way absolutely dissed the iPhone 4, has uh, pretty much said the MacBook Air is the best kind of in their categories. The 11 inch scored 67 points out of 100. It bet the Toshiba Satellite 13 inch MacBook Air, which I've got here, has got 78 points and it just missed the Toshiba Prestige. Prestige. Portage, whatever you call it, missed it by two points, which was quite close. But nevertheless, the MacBook Air is in top in their respective categories, which is pretty damn awesome. And I guess it's one of the reasons why I swapped my MacBook Pro out from the MacBook Air, because performance-wise, it is simply stunning. Uh, and I'm glad I made the move to get a MacBook Air. Imagine getting a call from Steve Jobs. That kind of happened to one of the iPad app developers. He had his app projected and he was at a game of football, had a phone call from Steve and Steve said, hey, it's me, Steve. Uh, and Steve Jobs explained to him why his app was rejected and how he can fix it. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. The guy was shocked, obviously, and surprised that a CEO took the time out to give this guy a call. I mean, who, which other company does this? Insane. And while I'm on this, Steve Jobs has replied to an email in regards to Keynote. Uh, Keynote 11, or the next version of Keynote, will have Apple TV and AirPlay capabilities, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, this is, I think, going to be a hit for the education market. £99 for an Apple TV versus getting a projector for uh, you know a couple hundred pounds. A win-win situation, and not only that, the whole UI of Keynote, uh, the presentation style and so on, it's just going to be epic, I think, and... Uh, I can't wait till the next series, even although I'm probably not never going to use Keynote, but I can definitely see um, you know, some markets or some business markets definitely getting a boost with this. In social media news, Apple and Twitter have come to an agreement whereby both services are integrated, so now you can share with your followers what you're listening to and previews and so on. You remember when Pink started off, they had Facebook integration for possibly three hours and Facebook then kind of declined. Uh, that integration or they took it away because there were some issues, internal issues, and that's still kind of ongoing. But I think Twitter is going to be a hit. Personally, uh, and I want your opinion as to what, which service do you use more? Do you use Twitter more? Do you use Facebook more? I tend to use Twitter a lot over Facebook. And I guess one of the reasons is because I've got a Twitter client on the Mac, and I've got a Twitter application on the iPhone, and I've got the Facebook uh, application as well. But I find Twitter is kind of good for small, it's simple, it's easy. You know when you're going to log on to Twitter, uh, you're going to put in 140 characters or less, and that is it. With Facebook, uh, you can do so much, and you know once you go in there, there's going to be so much to do. You kind of, well, I kind of get, you know. So it's going to be interesting in the next few weeks or months if Facebook actually comes back and says, hey, we want in on the ping. This next story is very, very good news, and it's, I'm very excited to hear about this, and it's on iPod's liquid damage assessment policy. And you're probably hearing that and thinking, what the hell is that? Basically, every iPod, iPhone, iPad, the headphone jack inside that is an indicator. So if you happen to spill Coke, Iron Brew if you're in Scotland, or any water, any kind of liquid inside that, and you take it to a genius bar and say, hey, you know what, my device is not working, they will flash a torch inside here. And if that indicator is a colour, I think it's blue, then they will say, beat it, we're not going to fix it, it's not covered under Apple Care or our warranty policy. Uh, and that was it. But now they've kind of relaxed the rule a bit, per se. What's going to happen is uh, you go in and they will do additional checks. Staff will uh, open up a wee bit and check some other stuff and determine if it was accidental to damage or something else. Because there's a lot of outcry or a lot of topics or a lot of debates on the internet where people have said, you know what, I haven't spilled anything on it. So why is that indicator turned blue? I haven't spilled anything. And BBC Watchdog uh, carried out a report a few weeks back on it as well, uh, which was kind of bashing Apple for this insane policy, but now they seem to have relaxed it. Even although it says iPod, uh, I'm presuming uh, they're going to kind of roll it out to the entire line, that's including the iPhone and the iPad, will kind of make sense. But have you had a situation where you've had your device and 
you know you haven't spilled anything on it and you've took it to the Apple store and the Apple store staff or the genius bar have told you to kind of get lost. Uh, that would be interesting and pretty epic to read that. And I hope it never happens with me, of course. Apple also released iTunes 10.1, which brings a number of uh, bug updates and it's got AirPlay features as well, which obviously won't be useful until iOS 4.2, which will be released next week. So stay tuned for that. The final version of the Gold Master release has just been updated yesterday. So expect the full and final public release um, by next week. I've been using it on my iPad for just over a week and it's fantastic. Um, it's just great, the whole multitasking, folders, and what you have already on your iPhone, now pretty much ported on to the iPad, which makes it a bit more usable. And although I haven't had any problems with the first Goldmaster release, some people are reporting Wi-Fi issues, which I've not had, but I guess I'd rather have a full polished version than to get a public release when it's kind of buggy and people send, you know, kind of start crying and so on. Mac OS 10.6.5 was also released earlier this week and I highly recommend it. Stability issues, performance issues, bug issues, Bluetooth problems, uh, and they've all kind of been fixed and obviously you're gonna have a more fresher, uh, cleaner system, so go and get that as well. Final Cut Studio 2011, more news on that. Steve Jobs has yet again been replying to more emails and a customer rightfully said to him, look Steve, my clients are investing thousands and thousands worth of uh, dollars uh, on video editing and we want to know what is happening with Final Cut. Are you planning to ever bring an update into this or not? Um, and I guess it's a valid question. I mean, there's not been much on Final Cut. It's still not 64-bit supported um, with a screen flow, which is the basics of editing software is. Um, and these customers, are, you know, people who use Final Cut Studio are top end kind of, it's, it's a pro market. Um, and they really should have everything, they should have all the updates, it should be a yearly cycle or less perhaps, um, they should be kept up to date with stuff uh, and it's not happening yet. But Steve Jobs said to him, listen, it's all coming, it's going to be a fantastic update in quarter one of next year or early next year. So if you are waiting for one, hang on as uh, around the corner pretty much. iWork is coming to a Mac App Store near you and this is very good, I think it makes sense to have bundled uh, software into this app store and what better way to launch this new platform than to have your own world-class software on it. And I guess, you know, when I got iWork, I don't use everything. I don't use numbers. I used it occasionally, but the only ones I used was Pages and I thought it was fantastic. Keynote was great. So what Apple are going to do is they're going to have individual offerings of Keynote and you buy it individually rather than the full package and then not using it. I wish they'd done the same with iLife because I don't use uh, some of the things in there as well. Also, Apple have removed the 2009 logo on their retail packaging, which suggests that either they're just going to give iWork, the current iWork a tiny bump. It's not nothing going to be nothing major. It's just going to be a tiny bump. And having rather than having you know 2009, 2010, 2011, just have the one word iWork. And whenever they feel like an update, it will just be iWork. Uh, there's not going to be any kind of years uh, associated with it which can be good and cannot because then you don't know when to buy something because the date really distinguish how old the software is and when to expect the bump uh, and if there's no date then you kind of lose it. So I guess in the next few weeks we will see more and Steve Jobs did definitely say there's a, a few more interesting things this year and I think iWork is going to be one of them. And last but not least, just to end it on a gaming note, GTA Mac Trilogy will be coming to a Mac near you. You can place your pre-order in now and you can have the Trilogy box set which contains GTA 3, GTA Vice City and GTA San Andreas and have it delivered next month. Uh, GTA, this Trilogy was something that I used to play on the PC quite a lot uh, a few years ago. Uh, again, it's only 10 years late, um, but hey, I'd rather have it now than never to have it and thanks to Trans Gaming for it. So will you be getting it? Do you play GTA? Have you played these games? I know there's more kind of advanced, more good games, but this is kind of a nostalgic game per se. But guys, thanks for watching. Remember you can join me on iglassvision.com. If you have any comments on the stories, leave them down below. Video response would be even better. Uh, and remember you can download this podcast from iTunes or you can watch it on YouTube, whichever way you like. And guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.